Now, St Bartholomew's Hospital in London has nursed patients through the Black Death, two world wars, of course, most recently, the COVID pandemic. It's treated hundreds of people in intensive care. So this weekend, St Bart celebrates its 900-year history. I've, I've said it a few times this morning. Uh, John's there for us this morning. John, hello there. I've said it a few times this morning. I'm still going, really? It's really 900 years? What else was going on 900 years ago? People were out on streets, muddy streets with carts, weren't they? It was medieval, pre-medieval. Exactly. So it was the beginning of healthcare nine centuries ago, an extraordinary period. And healthcare has been taking place on this site with great, enormous changes, especially in latter years ever since then. We're in the atrium, which looks absolutely fantastic this morning in the reception of Bart's. And they've got a wonderful cake here to mark the celebrations and cupcakes as well for the staff. Apparently, they'll need around two and a half thousand of those. Uh, so the bakers have been hard at work. I can tell you, as you can imagine, getting things ready for the celebrations. It's a place that's extremely proud of that auspicious history, but also is very ambitious for the future. The story of St Bartholomew's Hospital is the story of healthcare itself. Created by Rahir, a monk, to look after the sick of East London who were too poor to afford treatment, this deed, written in Latin and preserved in the hospital archive, denotes its foundation in 1123. And nine centuries on, it's still providing care, despite infrequent obstacles, such as Henry VIII's dissolution of the monasteries cancelling its income. But, following a concerted campaign, Bart's was saved, a decision signed off by the king himself. We know that this was issued a, a couple of weeks before Henry died, so I don't know if he'd been, been worn down in, in his illness. And there was also actually a lot of concern kind of in, in terms of public health about infectious disease, about plague, about syphilis, which was quite a new illness. And there's reference to the, the kind of the sick poor lying in the streets who need somewhere, somewhere to be cared for. So this is probably our most advanced bit of equipment in the radiotherapy department. So this is called a cyber knife, and it's a fusion of robotics with radiotherapy technology. These days, the hospital provides some of the best cardiac and cancer care in modern medicine. If you select the patient very carefully, you can use this type of machine to deliver radiotherapy with pinpoint accuracy to essentially ablate, to destroy that spot of disease within the patient's body, whether it's in their liver, their lung, their spine. And we've seen some great results come from using this type of treatment. Andy is on his 24th visit for radiotherapy for prostate cancer. What a way to celebrate a birthday. I had a diagnosis five years ago. Wow. I had a prostatectomy then. And so I've been monitored by the NHS ever since. And last year it reached the level which triggered the suggestion of further treatment. So then this machine comes into play. I don't think you'd get anything much better, could no, you? Well, that's what I'm saying, yeah. I mean, I think this, this unit's 12 years old. I think this machine's only a couple of years old. And so they look after us. Good, good. Yeah. And happy birthday. Thank you very much. <laughs> and many more to come. <laughs> Let's hope so. That's the most important thing, isn't Let's it? Let's hope so. Many more to come. <laughs> Great stuff. Bartz was visited recently by the king. Among those he met was Nell Badresha, a survivor of what's known as triple negative breast cancer. Aggressive and until recently, survival was unlikely. But staff here are helping to change that and Nell has been given the all clear. Cancer to me felt like a death sentence. I was devastated, beyond devastated. I was, I was shattered, everything, my world imploded. Um, but the one thing that I latched onto was my oncologist because she was so honest and hopeful and she used the word curable in my meeting and it wasn't something I was expecting but if she thinks that there's hope that I can do this then I can do this and that's what I latched on to. Along with its long history the hospital has ambitious plans for the future. A new breast cancer centre that will bring all aspects of treatment under one roof. The dream is to to make my job go away. Uh, that we have su such effective ways of diagnosing cancer and breast cancer early and treated well that ultimately in, in the future if a patient comes through the door we can rather than saying what we do at the moment we can treat you extremely well we hope and you're most likely cured at the end 
my dream would be to be able to say you will be cured. And that's still a big step ahead. For staff working here, sometimes across various sites, it's a game changer. Super locating everything onto one site means we've got access, all those patients have equal access to research opportunities. Even if there's not a trial applicable to them, they can donate their tissue into our tissue bank. Um, that means that future generations of research proposals can pull on that tissue to be able to make more, uh, more treatment opportunities for patients. Also, the care would be more holistic and waiting times reduced. Waiting for scans, waiting to get treatment started, waiting for test results. Actually, with the creation of the breast centre, having everything under one roof, will actually allow us to have more capacity and more leeway to actually be able to see patients a lot sooner. And of course, the Redevelopment the work rarely stops in city centre hospitals, but this is unique. One of the buildings has two huge paintings by the famous 18th century artist William Hogarth, which in the future will be open to the public, to patients and to staff. The hospital areas are incredible technical, clinical spaces, but what you have here is something different, a place that people can come and, and relax, um, um, unwind, it can be an aid to recovery and reflection. So um, we want it to be as relevant um, now as it was when the building was first finished 300 years ago. It comes as no surprise that an institution that lasted 900 years through fire, war and political upheaval has done so because it looks not just to the past but also to the future.